I'm Hector. Welcome to the second installment of the Design Your LA River course, brought to you by the Elysian Valley Arts Collective. If you haven't seen the first video in our series, please click the link here. In each video, we will be covering the basic design tools and resources you'll need to successfully submit to the Lewis McAdams 18-year-old and younger prize. This week, our objective is to cover what concept means. Together, we will review what it means to hear or collect data from workshop one ways we can begin to analyze what we've heard or collected, and lastly, how to take this analysis and begin creating and forming your ideas from concept. Last week, we looked at examples of public art and how art can influence and shape its context or surroundings. Let's look more at one of our presented examples of public art from the last workshop. We'll hear from the artist of Her Secret is Patience sculpture in Phoenix, Arizona, about her intention and concept behind the art piece. There's no right or wrong way to understand the work. <laughs> Uh, to some people, it's um, a saguaro boot. To some people, it's part of nature. Some people see a monsoon cloud. Uh, some people see a net. It's all those things and none of those things. Um, that's the beauty of art, is it lets everyone bring and create their own meaning. The artist describes a piece as up to interpretation. Whoever looks at it gets to imagine what it could be. Have you imagined what your public art destination could be? Well, let's kick things off. Let's look back at last week's challenge number one. Last week, I asked you to digitally walk the length of the Ellie River and find three things. Find something you like, dislike, and something unknown to you. Through this exercise, you are gathering information or data that can be used to inform your concept. Like discussed last time, there are different ways to gather or hear. That could also include researching the river's history, nature, and by learning more about the neighborhoods that surround the river itself. When you gather this information, like the three things we just discussed, you are not only literally gathering information, you are beginning to form your thoughts and your own context of the LA River. Whether you know it or not, you've already subconsciously started to develop a concept. You can always come back to this step and gather more data. Let's explore one way to begin forming the information you've gathered and your ideas into concepts. We will analyze what we've heard and gathered in challenge one. Let me explain. Using this simple matrix, I've written down what I like, what I dislike, and something that is unknown to me here in a row. Something I like is the pattern of the stones in the river and the way that they create a texture over the water. Something I don't like is how narrow the bike lanes are. Something unknown or something I don't know a lot about is why the water in the river get so narrow along certain parts of the river. We will ask ourselves three simple questions about each of these topics. Why was I drawn to this? Where did I see this? How might this inspire my public art destination? We'll take the first step, which is asking yourself why you were drawn to these images in the first place. Why do I like those stones in the river? They create a weird and awesome texture. I've noticed that they actually provide places for the birds to sunbathe in the center of the river. I like that it's a place where I can see nature. How do I dislike the narrow bike path? It's hard to walk on, and it's unsafe for speedy bikers and walkers. The bike path doesn't look like it even exists in some part of the river. Lastly, our unknown. Why is the river so small in some spots? I looked it up and I found that it was paved this way to control water when it rained. Where did I see this? Then begin to explore how our public art installation can be inspired by these thoughts. Let's ask ourselves, how might this inspire my public art destination? Let's begin brainstorming some ideas together. The concept or idea could even be about how the birds sit on the stones in the river. Just like the birds, people come to enjoy the river. What if the installation provided places for people and birds to perch? Or looking at the bike lanes and how narrow they are, just like the roads expand and contract to accommodate traffic types, like in the image. What if the bike lanes expanded and contracted just like the streets do? What about the small, highly paved areas of the river? How might they inspire my public art destination? I think nature should be everywhere, especially in the river. How might I add trees or grass uh, here? It's important to note here that your public art piece will be drawn from your own experiences and what you've learned in research, so everyone's solution will be different, and that's great. You'll maybe also find, as you do the above exercise, that your starting point isn't right. Go ahead and start again. Go back to the river and find something that interests you. Anything. This part is about exploring and learning. 
At this point, we'll take one or two of the ideas or concepts, transform that concept into something tangible. In the design profession, we often do these design exercises, called charrettes, rather early in the timeline of a project. Often before we have all the information, that forces us to take an idea from the concept stage through to something real rather quickly, sort of like a prototype. These charrettes help us test our thinking behind the concept and identify things in our design that we maybe hadn't thought about, or even sometimes showing us that the idea is not worth exploring further. At this stage in the design process, things are a bit fuzzy, and that's okay. It's an abstract exercise, and you don't have to have a solution yet. You'll be looking for inspiration from your own experiences. Taking the example of the bird stones, I know that I want to do something that allows people to pause and reflect, just like the birds sit and sunbathe on the stones in the river. I want my art piece to allow someone to feel like the bird does, a calm surrounded by a river of running water. Just like the bird is slightly elevated above the water, what if I provide a small perch a few feet above the running river that is the bike path into it? How do people get there? Do they climb? That seems dangerous. Maybe instead of moving up over the path, we move into the river with these perches standing out over the river. That way, there's no climbing involved, but you get the same feeling of being calm and isolated amongst the bikers and joggers, just observing. To take this even further, just like the stones vary in size and location, I placed a bunch of these perches with varying widths, being able to have a lot of people on them, or just one. I can also adjust the angle of the perches, making some easier to get to you, and some more difficult, just like the rocks on the riverbed. As you're doing this exercise, you'll inadvertently stumble upon a few questions. What are the perches going to be made of? How tall are they going to be? What color are they going to be? How big do they have to be? What shape are they? How close to each other are they going to be? We don't have answers to these yet, but these questions will help us test our concepts in the next course. Make a note of those questions. That brings us to this week's challenge number two. I want you to take one or two of your answers of the like, dislike, or unknown from challenge one and put it through the matrix and see what happens, just like I did. Then, using anything you like, like color pencils, crayons, pencils, watercolors, scissors, and construction paper. Do a design charrette to quickly work through an idea. As you're working through this, you will have a lot of questions. Write them down. They are important and you will need them later. The goal of this challenge is to have you come up with a few early ideas of what your art piece can be. Allow yourself to be weird and think of things that make no sense or maybe make sense only to you. Of all the ideas you'll come up with, stick with the ideas that connect with you or mean the most to you, even if you're not sure why yet. Next week, we'll be taking these ideas and further refining them to form your art proposal. Thank you for watching this video and following along to this course. A huge shout out to the Elysian Valley Arts Collective for sponsoring this series. Stay safe and I'll see everyone next week.